So welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today we're talking about automation and innovation in the hemp and cannabis industry. We are here live at the World Trade Center. I'm here with Arner and Denny. They're with Green Vault Systems. I'm here with Jason of 420 Wholesale Pack. And then there's Andy of Poseidon Asset Management. I think we were talking about offline. There's a company uh, that's making um, a cylindrical joint and they're from the tobacco industry and they're requiring that they're in control of the entire stage. And so it's really important that you work with somebody who knows what they're doing, because when you don't, um, you're allowing somebody from another industry to dictate the finished product and they don't know anything about it. So they're really mandating that you, they, you use all the same conveyor belts that tobacco uses when it's not really relevant. Um, you're going to lose a lot of your trichomes and, and good stuff along the way. And so you want to shorten that, that, uh, that distance. And so it's really important to, to, uh, to know who you're dealing with and that they are reputable and subject matter experts. So have you seen um, any, like what are the, the recent obstacles for you, your region for growth and success? It's a good question. And uh, unfortunately the cannabis industry, that's a uh, is, is, is very long winded answer to that. Um, you know, in short, you know, you, you can break out in a variety of ways. I think here in California, we've had a, you know, somewhat rock and roll of, of, of regulations um, you know, getting a, a, a true official license has been a hurdle for a variety of companies um, and really just an unclear regulatory framework. I, I think being a small uh, small business owner in this space is uh, extraordinarily difficult. Um, staying on top of regulations, which I, I think have finally settled somewhat here in California, and it's more of the implementation phase, um, which is inherently less chaotic than when regulations were, were changing every day. Um, much like kind of like what we saw in Washington when uh, one day gummies were made completely illegal. And then I think it was, you know, four weeks later, or three weeks later, uh, that, that was kind of rolled back. So, you know, I, I, I think you know, staying in line with, with regulations and, and, and staying off the radar of, of any sort of enforcement. Um, you know, here in California, you know, the amount of cannabis that is produced is, is absolutely astronomical. Unfortunately, a very large percentage of that is ultimately bleeding into the black market. Um, and the price differentials is, is, is wild. I mean, you can go and you could purchase an eighth from a dispensary for, for $60, or you could purchase, um, you know, a pound on the black market for, for under a thousand. So there's, there's a lot of hurdles to overcome in that regard in terms of out competing the black market. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially doing so compliantly. Um, so, so regulatory broadly is, is one huge area. Um, and then certainly there's, there's, there's the aspect of banking. Um, again, I've, I've got to mention a few times here. Um, I'm sure everyone's uh, at least loosely familiar with the, the Safe Banking Act. Um, I, I really do think this is something that we can actually, uh, in one form or another, anticipate being passed sometime in, in 2019. Um, You're ahead, and, 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 and that will next question. I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off. Ah. So hold up. Hold up. All right. And with that, I really appreciate, uh, you all being here with me today. Uh, so with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is your Cannabis Business Podcast, The Talking Hedge. Like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out.